A purpose is not something that someone told you to do, it's something that you decided to do according to who you are today. But if you don't know yourself, the purpose will be done in your level of consciousness. That's why it's so important how we act. Uh, humanity created morality as a way to define what is going to happen to you according to how you behave. But what the problem with morality was that it was not about other dimensions or about yourself. It was about if you don't do according to what the village is saying, you might be left behind or die because no one will protect you. So everything that we do in terms of good or bad is to be accepted by the group, yes. the herd. And for people that are like hitting up against challenges and it's not in flow for them, what would you recommend to support them in coming back into alignment? Well. Ask yourself the three questions, which is... This is one of the most mind-blowing, life-altering conversations I have ever had, and I'm so excited to share it with you today. We're going to be exploring what our true purpose is, why fear is actually a good signal, and all of the deep questions like, why am I here? What happens after we die? Join me today with our special guest, Matthias De Stefano, who is a spiritual leader. He's an author. He's a featured expert on Gaia TV and a well sought after guest on many different podcasts who's gained a lot of attention through his ability to remember his past lives. So we're going to talk about our journey of spiritual awakening, how to tap into higher states of consciousness and trust your own inner knowing and intuition. You do not want to miss this powerful and magical episode where we share insights about the true nature of the universe. It is profound. Buckle up. I hope you enjoy it fully. Mateus, I'm so happy that you're here. Thank you for being here. Thank you for just your time and your energy. And just before we dive in, because I know this is going to be such a beautiful conversation, will you give us a little bit of a context to your spiritual gifts, some of your upbringing, and how that's kind of shaped your life perspective now for people that may not know yeah, of you? Of course. Yeah. Well, thank you for inviting me. Yeah. And, uh, um, well, I kind of can... Um, uh, name myself as a rememberer mm -hmm. because uh, everything that defined what I did was to remember since I was a child. Mm -hmm. So um, I was able to not only remember past lives but also what happens in between and uh, in other dimensions. Mm -hmm. And because I had no religious in my context, uh, it was all agnostic, okay. my family. So for me, it was all like... Um, for them was all like he has a lot of imagination <laughs> and creativity okay so they encouraged that oh, instead beautiful. of saying don't speak about these things or mm. uh and that helped me to actually be more confident in what was happening to me mm. um um because it was not like religious or or something that you shouldn't speak about uh, but it was also not spiritual mm -hmm. so i didn't grow uh, i didn't grow in a spiritual context yeah so uh for me it was all about um uh, science studying what uh what is uh, plants dinosaurs or this kind of things mm -hmm. and the beings that i used to see when i was a child uh they explained me about nature they explain me about how we uh we humans are just an expression of the spirit uh of the spiritual realm without saying spirit yeah the spiritual words yeah um it was all about um, the essence of the plants, the essence of nature. Mm. So for me, it was um, I started to learn what spirituality was when I was 17, <laughs> actually, when I started to ask for help, trying to understand what was happening to me. Mm. Um, and I wanted to study education to help other kids that were going through the same, mm. not understanding what is this reality. Mm -hmm. But then when I was 20, I think I understood that the people that were more uh, lost were the adults. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, um, they, so they invited me to Congress of Education and suddenly I spoke in one of them. And, uh, and that's how people started to record me, to put some videos in YouTube mm -hmm. um, and all in Spanish, of course, in that mm -hmm. time, because I'm from Argentina. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, and then it went viral. Yeah. And I started to do things around the, the world and try trying to teach people about how the planet works, how the universe works mm -hmm. and everything. So, 
Yeah. I love that your family was so encouraging and that they just thought it was your imagination yeah. and that you had a blank <laughs> slate so yeah. that it was really nurtured and not um, hindered in any way and that yeah. you didn't have some of these religious or spiritual backgrounds. It was just your experience. Yeah. It's totally. really beautiful. Yeah. I had to learn all, all, all the spiritual things Good. when I was 18, 19. Yeah. Like what were the words and everything. Yeah. So I used to, to name the things that I remember in other languages that I could remember. Mm -hmm. And when I explained what lives. it was, yes, uh -huh. when I explained what it was, uh, people said, oh, we call this like that. Oh, or, interesting. Yeah, so that's, that's how I was well. learning. <laughs> As I was explaining, I yeah. was learning. Yeah, oh, the... we call this reincarnation or we call this <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. better yeah. that way. Yeah, yeah more trustworthy. Exactly. Yeah. I know a lot of people struggle with purpose or feeling like, why am I here? Mm -hmm. What would you say to people that are kind of grappling with those questions? I'm curious your perspective. Well, it's, it's a long topic about purpose mm -hmm. because usually we want to find our purpose as, as if it is um, a must. Mm. Uh, but actually, um, the purpose is going to happen anyway. It doesn't matter what we do. The thing is that um, it can be done in a bad way, mm. unconsciously, suffering, mm. if we are not aware of it. Okay. So it's not that we are not going to do our purpose if we don't know it, but it will help knowing a little bit. Um, and actually, one of the uh, one of the ways in which we can understand what a purpose is mm. is to understand the etymology of the word. I love to mm. to go back to the meaning of the words to uh, to know the power of them. Mm -hmm. So purpose is when you say something that is put in front. Hmm. So it means that you put it before. It's like saying, I want to do this, so I will throw it in front of me so I can see it. Okay. So a purpose is not something that someone told you to do. It's something that you decided to do according to who you are today. Hmm. Which means that by understanding yourself in your design, which you can use any tool around like astrology, mm -hmm. psychology, mm -hmm. anything that can help you to understand who you really are. Mm -hmm. Psychologically speaking? Yeah. Okay. Psychological speaking, um, astrological speaking, mm -hmm. you don't have to go like yeah. in a very deep thing. Yeah. But just to understand the design that you are here today. Yeah. I like the Enneagram as one framework to understand the psyche. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, that gives you the basis to understand what's what is your purpose okay so uh because your purpose can only be accomplished according to what you are so um in order to be done you have to transform or use correctly what you are but if you don't know yourself mm. uh the purpose will be done in your level of consciousness okay that's why usually people suffer Mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. because um, of the levels of consciousness exactly yeah. yeah so it's not what you're doing it's the consciousness from where you're doing it from. exactly yeah mm -hmm. that's also the word destiny uh -huh. is what uh what is going to happen depends on not where you go but from where you are coming from mm. that's the word destiny is to move from one spot mm. destare which mm. is i'm here and i move from here okay so destiny is not what is ahead is where am I here? Where am I now? So I have to move. <clears throat> so that's why to understand yourself can show you where to go. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important also to, to understand why the universe doesn't show you the purpose when you are born. Yeah, you're diving into all the things I want to ask you about. So, so <laughs> <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm curious, like this, like blank slate, not remembering anything. Yeah. That's, I know, obviously, that's intentionally designed. I don't know mm. why. Well, Im imagine if you have five years old and someone tells you, you are meant to be the president mm. of the United States. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> anxious. Yeah. <laughs> this is anxious. Yeah. You will try to study politics and maybe you. I see. You're not going to do it right yeah. because you are doing many things before you have accomplished the purpose of something that you had to do before, which is the preparation. Ah. Uh, a lot of people has to learn things, study things, go through different processes to gain tools mm -hmm. before they do something. Mm -hmm. 
and that purpose that that process sorry is more important than the purpose than the thing itself exactly who you become in the process exactly so yeah. that's why if if everyone is born knowing exactly what they have to do the uh, the perp the process uh, it's terrible yeah a lot of anxiety exactly yeah, yeah because you're all the time saying oh my gosh, I don't have, I don't know how to do it. I can't public speak. I'm not ready to get, present or whatever the thing exactly. is. Exactly. Yeah. So in the other, in the other hand, mm. when you don't know your purpose, you just do. Yeah. Follow things. the next simple exactly. thing. But you have two ways to do that. Okay. The unconscious way yeah. or the conscious way. So the unconscious way is like, I don't know why I'm doing mm -hmm. and um, and you just do and you are lost or you just repeat the systems of others mm -hmm. or consciously, which is I'm going to do this because I know this will help me to do something else. Mm -hmm. So you instead of just do, you discover. Yeah. You know that you are. Oh, this is crazy what is happening now. So let's see what it where does it takes me uh -huh. living no? in the, the adventure of living it, the, the adventure yeah. exactly that that's more consciously i can hear somebody saying like how do i know if i'm on purpose if i'm doing it consciously uh, would be some everything feedback? is aligned and you are always on time you know the right person um and and usually things are more easy and happy okay like um you can tell because things go smooth okay and 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 yeah it's it's easier everything is flow, easier more synchronicity the, flows flow. more yeah yeah so for people that you are can like see the synchronicities mm -hmm. and for people that are like hitting up against challenges and it's not in flow for them what would you recommend to support them in coming back into alignment well ask yourself the three questions which is um if what you think when you feel and what you do, they correlate to one another. Okay. So living in alignment with thoughts, feelings, and actions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, like integrity. What I think is, is related to what I feel and what I feel is what I do because usually mm. we don't do that. Interesting. Usually, usually we do because someone else asks us to do it, but maybe our emotion is like, I don't want to do it, but we do it anyway. Yeah. And um, so in, or, in order to live in harmony, coherently and in synchronicity, mm. you have to sync those three. Mm. That's the first Holy Trinity you have to sync. Okay. Uh, so the rest is a reflection of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, for people when they say, yeah, maybe it's easier for you because you would do that and you do this, yeah. but I have to work eight, uh, eight hours a day and I have to do this. Uh, and actually, I, I have this easier life because I do that. I live mm. coherently mm. with those three things. And we can all do that. Mm -hmm. It's just that we are trapped in the idea that, yeah, but some I have to work. No, I, I do work too. It's just that I'm happy doing what I do. So it, you cannot tell when I'm working or not. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. So Good. because I'm just being myself. You're being in integrity with your truth. You're living in that yeah. alignment. It's difficult. You have uh -huh. to. You have to be tested every week. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's not like, oh, yeah, I'm done. No, That's no, no, part of the like... purpose, right? To stay <laughs> walking the line. Like, oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Constantly. Yeah. yeah, totally. Imagine having a fulfilling career doing what you love, working from anywhere in the world, setting your own hours while making good money and a big impact. If that lights you up, then I'm super excited to share with you today's sponsor, the Institute for Coaching Mastery. This is my robust accredited year long certification program for newer seasoned coaches, therapists, leaders, and those just looking to up level their life in a profound way. We have an amazing community of students from all around the world who have really started their journey to expand with us both personally and professionally. And this experience is designed to give you the three things that you need to thrive. So first, you have all of the tools and support you need to move past what's been holding you back so that you can completely change the trajectory of your life. And then you learn how to masterfully and confidently facilitate transformation with your clients or your team, regardless of your niche. If you want to do health, business, relationship, or you just have no idea yet, we hold your hand through that. And then lastly, you'll receive my six figure and beyond signature roadmap that's customizable to meet you wherever you are. 
So whether you want to do high ticket sales, online marketing, or you just want to hit six figures without ever needing to go on social media, we've got you covered. And this truly is the most rewarding work in the world. We have new students now who have a wait list of dream clients in under a year. We also have seasoned students who are doing $80,000 months. And this is really about creating lasting transformation from the inside out so that you can share your gifts and serve the world in all the ways that you're called to. And I've seen firsthand the power of what happens when you have the community to collaborate with, but you also have the right tools and resources to really thrive. And so whether you want to do your own personal development, you're wanting to become a coach, or you're just looking for a cutting edge approach to really grow your business, the Institute for Coaching Mastery is for you. You are held every single step of the way. And so if you want to get behind the scenes access to the Institute with three proven transformational tools for free to help you create the business and life you love, all you have to do is go to alissanobriga.com forward slash tools, or you can find us at alissanobriga.com forward slash apply now to see all the details and apply today. And so bringing in, so I really hear that purpose is being, you're, you can feel the sense that you're living in harmony with yourself, with your mm -hmm. words, thoughts, and actions. That's a good mm -hmm. reflection. And for people, I'm, I know that people ask about free will and destiny. Mm -hmm. How do you hold, how do you hold that? Well, free will is very difficult. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think that the only people that has free will in this planet, nobody knows them. Mm. Um, maybe they are in a cave or something mm. <laughs> or in the middle of the forest and no one knows who they are. Uh. Um, free will, it's uh, a thing that you can only have from the fifth dimension beyond. Mm. But in the third dimension, you are the result. You are a consequence of your decisions. So your free will have have created this reality mm -hmm. give people a reference point for dimensions like third oh, dimension yeah. fifth dimension for those that don't know yeah so dimension is basically a measurement of something mm -hmm. so it's a perspective of one reality um, usually we believe that dimensions are levels where you have to go mm -hmm. or to claim or to i don't know um achieve. yeah achieve mm -hmm. uh but it's not like that mm -hmm. uh, a dimension is like for example uh, one dimension of myself is high, the other one is wide, the other one is depth. Yeah. So those are three dimensions. Mm -hmm. Then you have the dimension of time, which is eternity. That in the third dimension, we eternity interpretate in past, present and future. Yeah. We divide it in three. Yeah. Again, because we are in the third dimension. Kay. So we can only interpret things in packages of three because we are in the third dimension. Uh huh. But in the fifth dimension, you have another understanding. There is not only three options of movement. There is also within and without mm -hmm. uh, through eternity, mm. which is the fourth dimension. So it's only one thing that is being perceived in different ways. Yes. And we in this reality, we haven't evolved for that because we have the two eyes in front. Mm -hmm. So we evolved to to do this. Yeah. To have two options. Mm -hmm. Uh, and in the fifth dimension, you can see the whole. So that's why we tend to say in the fifth dimension is heaven where the angels are, the masters are guiding us and these things because they can see, mm -hmm. but they can't do. Mm -hmm. We can't do. Mm -hmm. They can see. So we cannot see, but we can do. Yeah. So it's a team. <laughs> yeah. It's like a, like different points of view of one thing. So when we talk about the fifth dimension, the observer, which is the fifth dimension, is able to decide what to see and mold the third dimension mm. through time. So it's a whole process of evolution until we exist. Mm. So um, if you have heard this concept of the quantum field, feel that we define reality according to observation. Mm -hmm. So it's not our eyes is the fifth dimension, which is a whole aspect of vision that can see everything. And because it can see everything through time, it can mold reality. Okay. So in the third dimension, you are the result of that observation. Mm -hmm. Like the physical world is a result, is a reflection of the quantum field. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that means that you don't have free will. Uh -huh. It means that you have will. Mm. 
that you can do, that you can transform, but you are a consequence of billions of years of processes of mm. being observed. Mm. So what you can do with it is to decide your destiny, which is I exist like this. I am the result of this. I don't have free will, but I can decide with what I am, which direction I will move through. Okay. Um, so you can decide kind of your destiny, uh -huh. but your destiny is defined according to what you are today. So it's okay. like a paradox. Mm -hmm. So you are free to choose, but you already exist, which means that you are not free mm -hmm. from what you are. Mm -hmm. So you have to deal with what you are, know exactly what you are in order to decide freely what to do. That's why the most important thing is to know who you are. Yeah. Because when you know exactly who you are, you start to free yourself from all those visions because you start to observe yourself. Right. And, and I want to check in with you. So it's, it's like, a very long topic. Well, no, it's so <laughs> deep. And I, you're the one that we, we get to explore this with. Like you'll mm. go there. And so it, the one dimension or one level of consciousness is to say that I don't have free will. Mm -hmm. And then we then and I thought we were going to go this to this depth at, later in the conversation. But I think we're going to it now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, where that's one level of consciousness where there is separation. Mm -hmm. And that there is time yeah. versus uh, I would imagine that this kind of is where it aligns, where on a higher dimension or a higher level of consciousness, there is no separation. There is no time. Mm -hmm. There's no observer. Exactly. It's observing mm -hmm. and it's all part of the one. Mm -hmm. And so from that reality, then there's no past life or there's, it's just exactly. is right. It is. Okay. So for, for people that think that they are a separate body mind, then they have no free will. Mm -hmm. They have will. Yeah. And then when you awaken spiritually beyond identification with the thoughts, the body, the mind, then there's a realization that you are all of it. And then there's, yeah, it's, it's, it's the ground of being. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But to get there, you have to, uh, forget about yourself. Yes. Because yes. Yourself, which is commonly called ego, um, is the one that holds you in this reality. Yeah. Is the one that helps you to survive. So in order to see everything and be free, you should forget that you exist. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. which is the most terrible existential crisis. Yes that everyone has to go through when they are trying to become the real self, um, which is like destroying yourself nothing, in every layer. Nothing and everything. Exactly. Yeah. I, my path has always been questioning who I am. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I am a girl. I am this body. I, and then at one point it was questioning awareness that I am awareness because there was a subtle identity in, yeah. you know, duality of like awareness yeah. and everything else. And so yeah. the path of, real deeply listening and questioning who we think we are is what unfolds the conditioned mind mm -hmm. into the unconditioned, which is always here, always alive, whether we recognize it or not. So that's yeah. really spiritual awakening. Yeah. And that's why the, the, the most ancient traditions, they, they used to, um, they used to live very close to death. Mm -hmm. Like death was a very important part of every day. Mm -hmm. It was not something like, Oh, you live and then you die. Yeah. No, you die every day yeah. and you have to learn how to die because that's how you set yourself free mm -hmm. from the conditionings of mm -hmm. who you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a, it's a tough process. Uh, and uh, of course, for the, for the cultures that are craving for life or eternal life, and they don't want to leave behind what you are or the family or, or mm -hmm. whatever you have built. Um, it's very difficult mm -hmm. because, um, and and then culture has mixed this this idea of that with ego yeah uh, saying oh don't be egoistic but that that's not the point yes it's not about releasing everything and not not to be 
egoistic or egocentric. It's like, I'm not ego. Like, you know, it's like, I am not. It's, yeah. There's more ego in that. Yeah. yeah. When you say, I am not, mm -hmm. it's, it's basically you yeah. are. <laughs> yeah. It's still ego. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's subtle. Yeah. It's tricky. So we have been trying to kill the ego uh -huh. all the time when the ego is, is basically the one that helps you to exist. So it's not about to kill the ego. It's about to understand what the ego is. Yeah. Uh, which is beyond you. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think that's one of the biggest mistakes that usually people do when they are trying to, to go, get, be spiritual. Yeah, I think, I think there's a misunderstanding that the ego is bad. Yeah. And that which judges the ego is the ego. Mm -hmm. And I think of it like a little kid. It's just, and it's, it's helpful to have a psycho like a personality and to move through the world to physically keep this body alive. Mm -hmm. And yet integrating it and waking up to grad school, like evolving from kindergarten, exactly, yeah. you know, it's just part of the process. Yeah. Um, and so we went deep right in, which I love, because that's the, <laughs> that's, I feel like the most valuable part of the conversation mm -hmm. we can have. And I don't know how many people are sincerely interested in that because it does hit you up against an existential death. There's a grip yeah. in the gut from the ego that wants to maintain. Yeah. And anything we resist is going to expand in our experience. So really bringing compassion and curiosity into that, I think, mm -hmm. chips away at some of the holding, but without an agenda, because what we are is always, always here yeah. with or without our conscious recognition totally. of it. And the concept also, when, when people say, say free in English language, um, the connotation of the word is I have to set myself free from something. Yes. I have to escape from something. Yes. There is something that is haunting me. There is something against that I have to escape from this. And uh, f the word free, free comes from a Nordic word, which is frey, mm. uh, which, comes, which means... Uh, brotherhood mm. uh but also freya means love mm. so actually you are free when you love yeah and it's not the love of i i love someone else it's the love of i accept everything so you are only free when you don't escape that's right when you stop trying to find freedom and you become everything yeah so that's why usually we don't have free will because mm. we tend to believe that freedom is when you move ahead trying to uh, get away from something get away from something my my spiritual teacher Adi Ashanti talks about freedom to versus freedom from which is essentially what you're speaking so yeah. freedom to mm -hmm. is real freedom not escapism I have to move away and get rid of these things but yes to my full human experience totally. to find freedom in all of it mm -hmm. yeah that's yeah. beautiful mm -hmm. and so this is that's the deepest conversation and I know that people some are interested in that and for people that are more so in the third dimension and scared of death Mm. I would love just to explore and hear your experience or perspective of what happens when we die. Yeah. Well, of course, it's, um, death is part of the, of the wave of the universe. Mm. It's not like a, an end. It's like an ocean. So mm -hmm. it's life, mm -hmm. death, mm -hmm. life, death. So, so it's like constant wave uh, in which you are constantly in. You, you, it never ends. Mm -hmm. Um it's just sometimes there are storms in the ocean sometimes <laughs> it's flat <laughs> yeah so uh but the waves are always there yeah so um so death is 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 like in terms of binary is like one zero one zero one zero right in the whole mm. existence um so without death there's no meaning to the one without the void there's no meaning to the everything mm. so the reason why we die is in order to finish processes to give meaning to the process so um <clears throat> and we usually are afraid of death because we we try we tend to not to complete the processes so we have to repeat them mm. and uh, not knowing what is going to happen after um because we forget it uh the desperation of not knowing um that's the most scary thing but what happened when you die it's actually a consequence of the movement of your life mm. so 
it's not about uh, going to heaven or hell. It's about going to your own heaven or your own hell. Mm. So, because in the fourth dimension, when you leave the third dimension, the fourth dimension, dimension just expands what you have created in the third one. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <laughs> according to how you lived... You said the fourth dimension expands what you've created in the third, mm -hmm. which comes back to then purpose is more about the consciousness in which you're doing things more than what you're doing. Exactly. Because then if it will be expanded, you can be in total bliss making the bed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of people that are doing a lot of good in the planet, but they live horribly. Mm -hmm. Like, within, they are sad, yeah. or it doesn't matter how good you do, Mm -hmm. um, if you are not coherent within, that's what you are going to expand. So it's not about doing an effort to be accepted as a good person. Mm -hmm. It's about how do you feel within? Mm -hmm. Because the that's... spiritual context makes so much sense to me mm -hmm. because it doesn't, it never felt fair or right in my younger self trying to understand that like people don't get e equal opportunity like these you know and so i've heard different analogies of like this is earth school we grow and evolve at this mm -hmm. in this human experience but what yeah. you're speaking of also the coherence that feels right for me in my system because mm -hmm. then it's about waking up to the love that i am to yeah. the love that is and okay mm -hmm. yeah yeah and and if you don't if you're not coherent with what you are supposed to do mm -hmm. um you are going to create constant realities of trying to repair that. Uh -huh. uh, so that's why whatever happens after is going to be according to that existence. So for the person that's like recreating a pattern in their life and they see it, mm -hmm. what I one of the things I'm hearing you say is to look at what's their coherence with their thoughts, their words and their actions and to get into alignment so that they can get back into synchronicity and purpose. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a constant questioning. Uh -huh is uh the, the question is the one that created us like created everything like who could i be what is my thought what do i feel uh what should i do like all these questions are the ones that shape who you are so mm -hmm. when you question yourself constantly you transform yourself constantly mm -hmm. and if you do that every day so you shape yourself every day in a better option mm -hmm. and sometimes that better option is not accepted by the morality of a culture yeah it's just your option so you have to go through that until you understand if that was right or not for yourself mm -hmm. and um and that's why we usually project to other dimensions uh, that's why it's so important how we act uh, humanity created morality uh, as a way to define what is going to happen to you according to how you behave. But what the problem with morality was that uh, it was not about other dimensions or about yourself. It was about if you don't do according to what the village is saying, mm -hmm. you might be left behind or die mm -hmm. because no one will protect you. So everything that we do in terms of good or bad is to be accepted by the group, yes. the herd. For safety. Uh, for safety, for survival, mm -hmm. exactly. Not for transcendence. Yeah. So when you start to think in terms of transcend transcendence into another reality, because when you die, there's no herd, <laughs> <laughs> there's no family, uh -huh. uh, it's just you. So whatever you're gonna project in the in the next one <clears throat> is about yourself, not about the others. Mm. And if you project related to the others, what happens is that you will constantly find lives that are kind of similar with the same kind of people mm. repeating the same patterns mm. and um, that can happen every day with every relationship so imagine that in thousands of years yeah <laughs> yeah so then then i get you know and i'll just share i was raised catholic mm -hmm. and i remember a voice coming in when i was about six years old I, I came in very clear i had a deep knowing i remember i have two older brothers when i was about nine I remember looking in the mirror and being laughing. I'm like, because my brother's friend started liking me at that age. And I remember being like, oh, this is who they think I am. And just laughing. Yeah. And and having a deep connection and knowing. And I think some of that got conditioned away from me through conforming and safety mm -hmm. and wanting to fit in and also, you know, some authoritarian parenting. And so 
part of what I hear you saying is like really having your own spiritual authority, like building trust in a deep knowing within yourself. Mm-hmm. And um, I have so many different wa- ways that I want to weave in this conversation. But um, what would you say to people who can feel that they're up against something like being accepted by a community, but knowing how do they really deepen in the knowing of their truth to follow, even when it's in the face, in the midst of a perceived threat? Well, that, that example that you just said yeah. uh, of, oh, this is what they think mm-hmm. they, I'm, I am. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you have you have two options there uh, or three options. One is believing that that is you. Yeah. Which is what commonly we do all do. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I accept that I am what the others think expect I am. from me. Yeah, mm-hmm. think I am. That's the normal thing. Um, the other option is fight against it like that's not me Uh so i have to get rid of myself i have to change everything self-improvement could fall under that trying to change myself exactly yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. um uh, but also you can go very far away from your real purpose Mm -hmm. because your purpose remember is according to the design that you are Mm -hmm. so by escaping that design you are creating another option, another version, but will bring you more problems because you are hiding the real truth, Mm -hmm. the real design that Mm -hmm. you had. So the third option is acknowledging that that design is a tool, it's not you. Mm -hmm. And you can use that tool Mm -hmm. with awareness when it's needed, Mm -hmm. which is uh, for people, usually it's um, something that I don't know how to pronounce in English, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is hypocr- hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. You're a hypocrite. Yeah. Hypocrite. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Yep. So <clears throat> um, because it's mm-hmm. like, uh, oh, you are faking that you are someone that you are not. Yeah. Yeah. It- <laughs> that's what we all do literally that's interesting because that moment i felt like i didn't understand adults mm-hmm. and i wanted to feel like i was connecting and understanding but i didn't understand mm-hmm. the kids my age the adults and so i chose in i remember being like i want to choose in and understand yeah. this human experience at nine and chose in and lots of trauma came from after making that choice yeah and that was really a redirect to come back into living a very sp- spiritually oriented life to Mm -hmm. question who am I for me looking at the moon is my clarity and so what I also I'm hearing you say is that life will give you feedback when Mm -hmm. you're in alignment when you're out of alignment constantly and not bad not punishment but just as a guiding system yeah Mm -hmm. exactly yeah Mm -hmm. what we perceive as punishment is actually something that is out of tune yeah it's like you are an instrument Mm. so in order to play yourself yeah your own instrument you have to be tuned otherwise dang yeah. It would be like an annoying thing uh, that, of course, people around will say, mm-hmm. like, doesn't sound good. Mm-hmm. So by resonance, if you don't, if you are not tuned in your own instrument, whatever happens outside will be according to that resonance. Yeah. So that's why you the situations that you leave around are not talking about what is happening around is about what you are resounding Mm -hmm. what is your instrument resounding with Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's why it's a constant practice of of tuning like as you see every the musicians they know music but every time that they are gonna uh, play the guitar they have to tune it yeah for every song they do it every time why because the vibrations that are around change the tuning even if you're not playing it Mm -hmm. meaning that if you don't do anything the resonance from the outside will take you out of tune (laughs) give you feedback yeah exactly so you have to constantly work in yourself in order to tune for every action and um related to what we were talking yeah the hypocrisy Uh is for example switching the tune of your instrument to play one kind of music or the other Mm. and it's not not because you know how to play different types of music you're a hypocrite Mm. 
your child's an artist. Mm. So sometimes you need to be someone for some people. You need to be someone for someone mm. for some others. But when you use that consciously, <clears throat> you start to use the personality as the tool and suddenly the personality doesn't define who you are. Yeah. You're just using it. Yeah. It's like saying today I decided to dress blue. Yeah. Uh, just because I think that is needed for what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. But today, but tomorrow you will change your clothes. Yeah. So the same thing with the personality because it's not who you are. Yeah. It's what you need it in order to do what you are supposed to do. Yeah. I, I'm just remembering because I there was something I forgot to share. When that voice that was teaching me when I was a kid would put it in very simple six grade or uh, yeah six year old um, language was like and I was Catholic and so I had no reference point mm. of anything other than that. Um, but it would say that the body is like a rent a car, yeah. where you go to different cars over time. And so um, and I was later when I started getting into. Uh, meditation retreats i'm like oh that's called reincarnation you yeah, know and I'm like exactly. oh that was just very and so whether you know people believe in that or not like there's it that for me makes so much sense yeah. and it's all back to like what actually supports mm -hmm. you know what supports my own evolution now yeah um but the the tuning that you were speaking of i don't want to make an assumption is that is that still living in coherence or are there spiritual practices that you're saying to not get so identified or not identifying with the ego essentially um whether it be spiritual practices psychological practices or just living in alignment is that what you mean it's by tuning? basically to try to live constantly in, in in alignment it's like your spirit your true self yeah. is the artist the musician the instrument is your personality and your body mm. and so you have to tune your thoughts your feelings and your body your yeah. actions yeah in order for the music to sound mm -hmm. uh, otherwise if you're not connected correctly with the true self you don't know how to play your song yeah uh, so that's why the path of coherence is always tuning yourself mm -hmm. always tuning your life mm -hmm. in between thoughts emotions and actions um, this is making me so happy because I used to be a licensed psychotherapist and I started a coaching institute that has an integrative methodology. Mm -hmm. And what we do is helping people with their thoughts, emotions, um, their actions, their unconscious program. So it's yeah. like all very much in alignment with what you're sharing. Yeah. And I can hear, yeah, anytime just for people just to land this, if you're feeling like you're unconsciously recreating a pattern, really do some of that tuning to live in alignment mm -hmm. with your truth, even yeah. if it goes against society's yeah, beliefs. Totally. That's why it's the questioning yourself is, is essential. Yeah. Who I think I am. Who, who all, all the questions and doubt mainly mm. to doubt about everything as a way to discover everything. So like living with a question mark, yeah. being in, in curiosity, discovery constantly. Yeah. Yeah. Because otherwise you transform um, a feeling or an emotion in faith and when you when you have faith you stop questioning mm. so you stop uh, perfectioning yourself in the possibility of you becoming god and you allow the universe to decide what to do because you have faith mm. so that's why you have to always doubt <laughs> <laughs> always question always, always question question a yeah. little bit more yeah yeah like hmm, is this the right path is this true is this really me is this what i want to do mm -hmm. um all the mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. and then existentially like it's really this is really real is there a god or you know mm -hmm. like that's good for the divine <laughs> yeah yeah I think people deeply want to feel safe in the world and I think they deeply want to feel like there's a tr they can trust life. Yeah. For people that are listening and they're just like I want to embrace this way of living more. Mm -hmm. or do you have any words of wisdom or or story or perspective to support them in in letting go and and trusting more that it's unfolding for them or like mm. there's nothing really to fear in that way? Well, the first question for that is what is my relationship with mom and dad? Mm. Uh because usually we tend to, oh, let's go to the universe. But our cells have been designed 
because of mom and dad okay. and um, the first meeting the first encounter and not only that because of all the history in our genetics mm -hmm. so our relationship with mom is the relationship we have with the matrix mm -hmm. our relationship with that is the relationship we have with all the patterns mm -hmm. so so that's what defines us towards the cosmos so when we start to try to connect with everything the question is um what is my relationship with mom what is my relationship with dad mm. and from there you start to build um the idea of how to expand your consciousness mm, because that's what defines who you are now mm. um and usually we tend to to go beyond, to go outside, to go to another levels of consciousness too fast, but... Like a bypass? <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. like trying, trying to, to escape into something greater. Yes. Yeah. And so it's what it, just a pause yeah. because I want to double click on that. I think a lot of people get into spirituality because they're trying to avoid something or they think it's like enlightenment would be this mm -hmm. golden ticket to opt out of human, hum, the yeah. human experience. Everyone who enters into spirituality, <laughs> it's 100 percent trying to escape the reality. Yeah. Um, the people who who are spiritual they were never looking for a spirituality. <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Basically. Uh -huh. um, because, um, yeah, because uh, basically um, when we talk about spirituality, usually we relate spirituality or spirit with spirits, something that is impossible to touch, mm. something that is invisible. So if it's invisible, what do I do? I project the idea of my mom into mm. Mother Earth. I project the idea of the perfect dad into God mm. or the cosmos. So. I'm not treating Earth and the universe as they are. I'm treating them as I would love for my parents to have been with me. I was not thinking you were going to go there, but I <laughs> love it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's why humanity usually don't think how plants think about God, for example. Yeah. Like plants have a totally different way to understand what God is. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, uh -huh. uh, but we created this perception of mm -hmm. mammals. Mm -hmm. um, which is completely different. Mm. So it's usually, um, of, of course, we can shape the universe according to who we are, but uh, but when we are trying to find the answers, not as they are, but as we expect for them to be, the first question is, how am I dealing with that? <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then to not opt out of the human experience, but to actually go into it, to, to mm -hmm. do some psychological healing. Yeah. And as, so within, as within, so without, so yeah, that there's exactly. a projection, life is a mirror. And so yeah. as we do that deeper work, I hear that it would naturally reflect yeah. in the So universe. I would say, coming back to the very origin of the word spirit, mm. it comes from the Latin word spirare, which means to breathe. Mm-hmm. So what is a spiritual being? A spiritual being is the one that knows how to breathe. Mm. So if you know how to breathe, it's because you are calm in the present. Mm -hmm. You kind of think about everything that you are doing to your body with every breath. So taking care of every part of your body. Mm. Uh, so a spiritual being is the one that lives here and now, not the one that wants to go there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah etymologically talking <laughs> yeah and but i love the like groundedness and the rootedness of just here and now and really mm -hmm. saying yes to our direct experience as it is yeah that's more of the freedom to freedom from and and in that willingness there's mm -hmm. transformation that happens and then deeper integration totally. it's not a bypass mm -hmm. yeah and the deeper you go within suddenly there is something that cracks in and when you go to the very origin of who you actually are, which is beyond the atoms, mm. and when you go to the essence of it, suddenly from a deep breath, you are in a galaxy mm -hmm. and you are feeling an alien and you're feeling so suddenly it's, it was just because you were doing the work of going to who you are, who I am, who mm -hmm. I am, who I am, deeper into that question, not going away. But going deeper who to within. Mm -hmm. And the layers that you have to grasp first is the biological ones. Mm -hmm. um, 
which have mold the psychological ones. Mm -hmm. So by design, by design. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say that because earlier, just looping back earlier, you said we put it in front of us, the like the yeah, the purpose, com the purpose was the, was that I mean, I we've, we're kind of talking dimensions and things, but are we who put that in front? Like what was the Just observer the observer okay yeah mm -hmm. the observer with the intention for spiritual evolution or deeper integration by mistake <laughs> <laughs> say more <laughs> this experiment <laughs> well it's the question like I, the observer is just one eye observing itself mm -hmm. like one like, point of view one perspective exactly of the whole. Uh, which creates void yeah uh when it's like all the forces together equals zero mm -hmm. so imagine everything observing exactly the same point is equal nothing so basically the void uh -huh. so what happened one of those aspects looked around so it was like mm. taking a, a view outside the center when that tiny point of view observe into a different direction what happened is created duality mm -hmm. and duality opened the chance for polarity mm -hmm. and by polarity it means observation so now there's there's no more void now there's something else that i can observe outside from that void mm -hmm. and seemingly yeah yeah so when that tiny thing moved away it created a wave and that wave made everything to turn to the outside. So instead of observing, it's like if all the colors of the, uh, how do you call it in English? The, the eye. The eye? The, the red the, the color oh, part? Oh, yeah, the color of your eye. Yeah. So it's like you see all this, these lines going to the center. Mm -hmm. So what do you have? A black hole in the center uh -huh. that captures light. Yeah. So imagine now that everything does like this. Uh -huh. What you have is white around. So the everything and the nothing is contained just because of the point of observation. Yeah. So which are all the rays of light. Mm -hmm. So if they are all observing within, it's void. If they are all observing outside, it's the everything. Mm -hmm. That's why the paradox that I am everything and nothing. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So because of that, we started to create different points of view yeah. and uh, different perceptions. So now, for example, as humans, we have two eyes that reminds us that in order to concentrate something in front, a purpose, mm -hmm. I need two eyes to balance it. I cannot perceive the third dimension without at least two eyes. Mm. Um, so I need that in order to see the distance mm -hmm. between things. Mm. So what is a purpose is the ability to focalize two points of view, one within, one outside, in a third option. Mm -hmm. And that's how a purpose mm -hmm. exists. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why it's a holy trinity. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, and I'm, I, I really hear, because I'm even thinking about people that are feeling stuck in the third dimension, wanting to evolve, thinking that the fourth or fifth is better. That's still more <coughs> escapism. Yeah. And so then it's just really- It's not better. Fully being where fourth we dimension are. Is it's like, what? Tell me, tell me more. <laughs> it's terrible because it's eternity. Uh, so the fourth dimension is all the times. Imagine fourth dimension is like instead of taking a trip yeah. to the mountains, you take a trip to history. <laughs> so as you walk in the middle of the forest, every tree is actually a past life that are combined mm. and doesn't make any sense. Mm. So if you are not properly Organize the fourth mm -hmm. dimension is hell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's basically bringing to you every memory that is aligned to what you are today. So if you are suffering in the eternity, you will echo towards you everything that happened to your soul related to suffering mm. through eternity. That's why we can relate it to hell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because that's fourth dimension. It's, it's not like. Yeah. What motivation person. then now to really <laughs> clean it up and yeah. prioritize having an open, clear mind yeah. and heart yeah. and living in alignment and coherence? Totally. Yeah. So every dimension can be 
horrible if we are not aware of yeah. how to move through it. Um, so when we think that living in the third dimension is a trap and we have to escape from the third dimension to go to heaven or something mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. uh, we we are kind of becoming Christians again, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, which is a very uh, ancient way of thinking um, in terms of morality. Mm -hmm. uh, and morality means uh, an agreement between people that live in one place. Yeah. So, um, the moral codes of that community. Yeah, moral codes. Mm -hmm. Moral means to, to uh, it's the same word for morade. Mm -hmm. So it's like, where someone lives. Mm -hmm. So morality is according to where you live. Mm -hmm. Subjective. It's very subjective. Mm -hmm. So so people created an idea of what heaven and hell are according to what for their culture is heaven or hell. Mm -hmm. And according to how you will behave, you will go to one or the other. Mm -hmm. And this perception of some traditions, because not all, all of them do the same, but for some traditions, that were world spread mm -hmm. worldwide. Um, the idea of the fourth dimension and the fifth dimension are related to this heaven or hell. So we are bounded constantly by this thing of I have to do the right thing, I have mm -hmm. to, or if I do the wrong thing, this will happen. Mm -hmm. But when you enter another dimension, it's completely different mm -hmm. unless you create yourself that heaven yeah uh, or that hell and you will leave that yeah mm. and uh, you will until living that reality so suddenly you will start to doubt <laughs> <laughs> i was like is this heaven uh -huh. like yeah what motivation to really take back our own spiritual autonomy and live in alignment with our truth then what is the motivation no i mean that feels like motivation hearing oh. you say that i'm like that gives more permission to just be autonomous and follow your truth even if yeah. others don't get it or align yeah. with it yet um but i i did hear <coughs> i did hear you talk about that a lot of people have been traumatized by religion mm -hmm. and kind of got disconnected from this magical way of living and mm -hmm. you know i i think we might be aligned in the sense of like I'm very mystical and mm. I, I, I used to study comparative mysticism, death, mm. death, death, dying in the afterlife in college. I would study all like I love the heart of every yeah. religious and spiritual tradition, like the the essence and love of it. Mm. But I also know religion can be really traumatizing for people and oh, the yeah. codes and the rules and the way people have interpreted it. How did you can you elaborate a little bit on yeah. how you under how you under you? what your thought process was well r religion is like personality it's a tool mm -hmm. it's a tool for people that cannot go deeper within themselves because they have to figure out something else mm. so it's easier for a lot of people that needs to accomplish certain purposes that requires concentration in the third dimension to have faith in something that is pre-written mm. and someone tells you what to do yeah because it's easier yeah and there's no problem in the universe with that. Like, it's a law. So um, so it's good if you don't bother anyone else. Mm. So it's it's fine. It's good. Um, so I would say that religions are tools. Mm -hmm. um, and But it's, they're not the way. Yeah. They're tools to find the way. Yeah. And I think any good teacher or religion really points back to our own truth. Totally. Mm -hmm. the, the, the real religious people the ones that are spiritual mm. within religions, because yeah. most of the people that are in religion, they're not spiritual people. Mm. They are um, just religious people, which means they follow something that is written, but they don't understand the words. Mm -hmm. But there are few religious people that understand the words, uh, the meaning behind them. Mm. And the reason why is because they don't take them as they are written, they question them. Mm -hmm. um, so... They and make them their own. They really sit with and yeah. like contemplate. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's why they can trust the words that are written mm -hmm. um, in, in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that there are some spiritual people in religions that are wandering and can share wisdom mm -hmm. from, from that. Totally. Um, the thing is that for religions, as I said, religion is like, like this is the way that we have the sign to reach 
something. Mm -hmm. When you start to question the way, you start to get trapped in the system. And that's why most of the people suffer from it. Mm -hmm. And the problem, some, the problem basically is that um, when someone suffers in a religion, usually starts to be against the religion. Mm -hmm. And the religion is not the problem, Yeah. Uh, actually. The problem is the people that are afraid of losing control mm -hmm. of other people. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> it's like, for example, uh, people blame money. Yeah. Uh, money is not the problem. Yes. Is what people believe about the money, what is the problem. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> money exaggerates what we're holding in our consciousness about it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So so, um, so when we blame politics, mm -hmm. no, it's just that these people are wrong in their coherence. Yeah. Uh, when we talk about religions are useless, no, they are not useless. It's mm -hmm. just that the people that are in religions are trying to control your life. Mm -hmm. So, or they're following a set of rules rather than their truth about exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, and there are certain teachings, I think, that are supportive. Hmm. I've heard this in a lot of um, like Zen teachings, like use the boat, the tool, the perspective to cross the river. But then when you're when you've crossed the river, let it go. Exactly. Like yeah. it helped for a certain period of time. Now I'm going to fifth okay. grade or yeah. Yeah. And you don't burn the boat. Yes. You, know, you don't like, judge the boat. It's all oh, good. It, it was, was terrible tool. because it was too small. Yeah. <laughs> and now I know that I can sail the ocean. Yeah. But yeah. But you it was good. It. You that's needed right. it. That's right. And um, so that's why when, uh, you shouldn't escape from it. Yeah. You should under, you should try to understand the level of consciousness mm -hmm. that is because what you said, that boat was built to cross the river, not the ocean. That's right. So if you're willing to go to the ocean, just thank the boat that helps you to cross the river yeah. to go to the shore. Yeah. Um, and in that in that way, you are going to make you are making peace with that. Mm -hmm. And it's not about religion. It's, it's not about religion. It's about how people believe or act according uh, with the tools that we have around. Yeah, that's um, very well said. Yeah, very empowering. And, mm -hmm. and let's talk about money because I think some of these, I just want to, you know, we can get a little bit more grounded where people go pretty unconscious into money. How, mm -hmm. do, you, how do you hold money? I think I've heard you say that you are a fan of spending money rather than just saving it. Yeah. But talk, talk I, to I'm us. a good spender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Talk to us about money and, and having a really healthy relationship with it or how you perceive it. Well, I think that money is, is another tool. Mm -hmm. Before it was seeds. Um, and we use it in the same way. Yeah. Uh, people kill for seeds mm. in the past. As people is killing today for printed paper that has no value <laughs> yeah yeah um but uh we have we have given value to many things in in history to different objects to different things is about what we appreciate about them uh but it's a way of of earning value or exchanging value yes and that value can be an action mm -hmm. or that value can be just time present listening mm -hmm. to someone or that value can be food mm -hmm. um but the value is not in the object mm -hmm. the value is in what you're doing with it so um if you if you earn a lot of money and keep a lot of money what is the value in your life it's a good question yeah it's so, a story that would be a story for some people of security and safety yeah. Versus if you don't cash in on it, where other than the story of mm -hmm. false security and safety, what is the value? Exactly. Mm -hmm. there, there's, there's no value on having money in your bank account mm -hmm. if you're not living it mm -hmm. because it's about exchanging. So that's why I rather spend my money in experiences with people, friends, uh, projects than actually having it mm -hmm. because having it... Uh, it's just trying to tell me that I don't value myself, that I don't value who I am. By not spending it, you're saying? By not sharing it. Oh, by not sharing it. But because it's not about I give you money. Yeah. It's about I give you an experience. Uh -huh. I share an experience with you. Mm -hmm. I, I, I give value to you uh, for what you are doing. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I cannot, I don't know, I cannot cook you. So I give you this money so you can have someone to cook for you. Yeah. So we, we accomplish in our society a way 
in which um, I don't know the word in English um, when you do something for exchange. the other. This kind exchange. of exchange, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, <coughs> exchange, but not not uh, money. Mm -hmm. uh, exchange like, oh, well, like a, trade. a chicken, for a trade. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, you know, like yes. oh, I have two chickens, you have a pig. You know, this uh -huh. kind of this kind of things that in the past used to work because we were like I don't know a hundred people in the village, mm -hmm. and each one was specialized in something. Mm -hmm. But today, it's Way like more complex. Yeah. Um, how can a healer? survive yeah just giving you reiki is like no yeah <laughs> like you have to eat, eat. Yeah. yeah but for someone that hour of reiki mm -hmm. or that five minutes of reiki mm -hmm. worth a thousand dollars because it changed Definitely. the person's day or, or life yeah. sometimes yeah so the value that you can give to things is is according to what you are sharing with the others mm -hmm. and so um it doesn't matter the shape of it it can be money it can be seats, mm -hmm. it can be listening. Yeah. Um, and so if people can't spend it or they're not, ha they're having a hard time giving or receiving, mm -hmm. you know, some of the work that I would do with people is to look at mom and dad or whoever that raised them. Mm -hmm. And what did they learn money was from them originally? Mm -hmm. And then is that actually their truth now yeah. to support having more of that flow and that value exchange and that experience yeah it's important it's important to question what is value for us yes. in our life what do we value and what's life? my truth yeah. around it exactly. Did, is what i inherited my truth and how i actually want to relate to money yeah mm -hmm. exactly yeah what about relationships how do you see relationships from a spiritual perspective well the, the, there was ones that i that um a friend uh, asked me um I, I cannot deal with this breakup that mm -hmm. I should have. And, and how do you, how would you describe the way of transcending this? And uh, <laughs> I was like, well, in when there's a proton and an electron, <laughs> like, like, like so unromantic. Yes, um, yes. But, but um, basically, the reason why everything exists is because of the interaction between positive and negative. Mm. So... Everything that exists is magnetic, so it has two poles. Mm. Is a polarity, yeah, and it cannot create or exist without polarity. But also, there's a truth: if you get stuck with this only polarity and you don't exchange or change the electrons around you, you would never create a molecule, mm. which means transcend yourself into another existence. Mm -hmm. You will never transform yourself in another element. So there's no alchemy. Um, and we use this word chemistry. Yeah. Like, is there chemistry between? Of course, it's all about chemistry. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about yeah. uh, how my molecules combine with our, your molecules. And sometimes when there is a lot of protons sharing between one another, we call it toxic. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if it's too much positivity in both mm. sides, there is a toxicity in the environment. Mm. So too many protons in one only place. Uh, so I see relationships as a way to combine and create new elements, new chemistry, new transformations and possibilities for experiences. Mm -hmm. But if you keep the same one in the same way and repeat exactly the same pattern constantly, mm -hmm. well, you become a rock, not a human. <laughs> yeah. Um, There's and no more aliveness. Yeah. There's no more growth and evolution through it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And and that's why we need conflict. That's mm -hmm. why we need um, changes. That's why when someone grows spiritually and suddenly recognize who you are, suddenly the first thing that you do is get divorced mm -hmm. <laughs> or mm -hmm. separate. Look within, start doing the work. Exactly. Yeah. Because now you cannot relate with the same person. Yeah. Because that, that person was showing you a mirror of polarity that you needed in that moment but now you change that polarity so you cannot mirror anymore with that person so mm -hmm. i think that when we start to understand that relationships are links to evolve yes and not something to tight or avoid mm -hmm. yeah um or be scared of yeah uh but uh something that helps us transcend and to be free because uh, to, uh, we are still believing that relationships are like marriages. Like, oh, we ha it has to work. And the only way it can work is 
if it lasts forever yeah and you live happily ever after yeah too much yeah. disney conditioning too, too much disney yeah. yeah um but that design is something that mainly was born in the middle east, uh, middle east um mm. it was a way of surviving yes um we've actually not been <coughs> as a species to get, we've not evolved that far from just being in marriages for survival purposes because it was easier to work together and to you know survive in that way and have yeah. a family and i like what you're saying and then this is very much about what i what i speak to and teach as well is like relationships can be a path for and a vehicle for spiritual evolution mm -hmm. yeah to see what we've not been able to see you within ourselves it. yes you to see it. ourselves and that contrast the duality right mm -hmm. and the challenges aren't bad but they can be used to heal and grow stronger together if you totally. choose whether you choose to stay with them or not it's still a mirror for a part of your <coughs> the part of yourself mm -hmm. and and i you know when i was i got a master's program in spiritual psychology and the third year i did optional which which is a health consciousness health and healing and i had a dream that felt more channeled and i woke up and i drew this beautiful drawing and it was kind of yin and yang without going into details about it but it was like your part of your work is to help people understand that the darkness isn't bad mm -hmm. and a lot of darkness that i speak to is more about the void which is yeah. more like the pure potential the ground of well-being mm -hmm. and i know you sp i would love to hear your thoughts and perspectives on good and bad um yeah. right and wrong to help wake people up out of some of the conditioned paradigm of that yeah well related to the relationships it's mm -hmm. like when bad things starts to happen we we tend to say it didn't work yeah but actually it worked <laughs> that's right it gave <laughs> like, you feedback exactly yeah because um a relationship that doesn't work mm -hmm. is actually showing you more growth than one that actually works mm. because when when a relationship works is because you are you're balanced so you are in a moment of stability mm -hmm. of your life but when you are transforming yourself it doesn't work mm -hmm. because you need to move to yeah. keep on going. Yeah. Uh, so, so that perspective of oh, it was a bad relationship. Yeah. Um, no, actually, it helps you a lot. The problem is that we try to go back to the same thing to try to fix it. <laughs> like oh, if it didn't work last time, so let's try it again yeah. let's try it again and we we are fixers by mm -hmm. mind because mm -hmm. our brain is designed to fix Find problems fix problems <laughs> totally yeah <laughs> fix problems all the time so so we we are trying to fix the other person yeah like oh it didn't work so maybe i if i fix him if uh -huh. i fix her or if i change <laughs> myself then i can make it work exactly mm -hmm. yeah and mm -hmm. it's not exactly how it works like of course you have to transform yourself but not because it has to work for the other person yeah but because there's something that it doesn't resound with you. So, oh, I have to tune myself mm -hmm. uh, in something different. And this connects with the good or bad, mm -hmm. because uh, nothing in the universe is actually good or bad. Mm -hmm. In the universe is trying, mm -hmm. is a test. It's like an ex a laboratory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, I have to try this. Oh, didn't work. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, this doesn't tune right mm -hmm. so um this doesn't sound properly but for example let's say um talking about music for someone that plays all the day i don't know uh, crystal balls and meditate and sings mantras well heavy metal is not <laughs> you know like the right thing uh -huh. like oh no that's bad but for heavy metal people, it's like opera. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, so what is good and what is bad? What is out of tune and what is in tune? Because some some of the heavy metal uh, singers know more about how to hold a frequency than someone that is singing mantras. Yeah, <laughs> you know? totally. So, so what is to be in tune? Yeah. Um. So when you pay attention to that, you have to you you start to understand that um the universe has also this test of what is out of tune what is in tune and darkness is actually the creator of reality so all the beauty that we see was designed by something that made light 
be trapped in a system mm. because basically we are light but moving slower because darkness so darkness helped us exist mm -hmm. darkness allowed this beauty to exist mm. darkness is the one that cut the light of the divine and created a rainbow mm. Mm. <laughs> like cut it in pieces like you can you can think about it as a war cutting <laughs> you know like an angel in pieces uh, yeah. but suddenly you have a rainbow yeah and beauty <laughs> and beauty yeah. yeah and all the possibilities mm. so when you think in those terms suddenly darkness is actually a creator mm -hmm. and when you try to put it all together and to make white light again darkness will say hey what are you doing mm -hmm. like if the colors were beautiful mm -hmm. like it's like it's like going to an artist's house and try to clean it all and put away all the colors and <laughs> saying it's good if everything is white yeah <laughs> and i was like Boring. because it's clean yeah and the artist would say like what are you talking about yeah. like i need to make a mess <laughs> uh i need to throw something i need to Contrast. ruin my brushes mm -hmm. you know um to to figure out things that i have never seen before mm -hmm. so darkness is kind of that mm -hmm. it's it's not against light because uh there's a war between light and darkness is against light because uh it's trying to divide light to produce more options mm -hmm. and uh, light is trying to always reminding darkness to find the harmony mm. in all those options mm -hmm. so we could be a team mm -hmm. let's say like light is the parents that are telling the children you can do a mess but then you have to pick everything up mm -hmm. you have to put order in your room mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. it's okay if you play but then organize everything there's a space for all of it exactly uh -huh. yeah but sometimes are the children that say that to the parents uh-huh so yes <laughs> coming back to accepting all of it exactly and i love what you're saying because right the mind is what constructs and divides good and bad mm -hmm. you know right and wrong and yet from different points of view it's all it just is yeah. and so but i love that you keep talking about this being curious being honest with your own attunement mm -hmm. and essentially saying yes to all of it i think that's yeah. such a beautiful way to live and as we and what i'm hearing is as we mm -hmm. come into living in coherence and harmony here and now yeah that supports more of that consciousness to live mm -hmm. into in whatever other dimensions yeah. and and of course when when someone that never did the inner work of this darkness and light within listens to this, mm -hmm. one of the main reactions that people has is like, oh, then I have to accept that there are pedophiles. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Like, or, or, or killing or war. Yep. And that's where I want to go. Good, good. I think <laughs> um, it's important. Because it's not about, oh, I have... I have to accept it and do nothing. Yes. Because when you work for the consciousness and the light, what is your job? To bring harmony. Mm -hmm. And what is harmony? For everyone to be in harmony, mm -hmm. coherently, mm -hmm. and happy. Mm -hmm. Kind of happy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say in plenitude. Mm -hmm. um, so when there is, in the process of trying to discover a new way, there is people that is unhappy out of tune, disorganized. So there comes the action of the people that wants to help them yes. to find the harmony again. Their attunement. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But, and that's when we have to take actions. That's why we are doing all this. Yeah, that's we're, right. We are doing all this to try to avoid these kind of situations, mm -hmm. try to heal these kind of situations. Mm -hmm. But if we are against yeah. these kind of situations, we are never healing them. I think a lot of people think acceptance means complacency. Yeah. And acceptance is an internal, okay, this is what is. And if I argue with that, it doesn't change the past. No. So internally saying, yes, this is what it is. Mm -hmm. And externally taking action yeah. to support their attunement and healing. Yeah. Rather than, and you know, there's choices and consequences in this mm -hmm. life. We, you know, put people in jail if they're breaking the rules or, but it, it, it's a lot of people that are traumatized continuing that. Exactly. And so how do we not add to that how do we come into harmony within ourselves mm -hmm. and be a space to support more of that harmonization on a global level mm -hmm. of course that's 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 the thing it's okay um 
if I stay at home complaining about, oh, there's darkness outside. Yeah. And I don't go outside to bring harmony. Mm -hmm. And I go outside to fight against it. Yes. So what I'm doing is basically giving power to the opposite. Yeah. And I make it, I make the war bigger. That's right. And wow. I think the most important work we can do is within our own consciousness first. Mm -hmm. And as we live in coherence and clarity within ourselves, yeah. that becomes a natural expression for how yeah. we live in the world. Yeah. No separation. Because every, every person that is doing something wrong yeah. or out of tune, which means they're making other people's lives out of tune, mm -hmm. uh, is because actually is a child that was not able to have an environment that taught them how to be in tune. Mm. So I, every time that you see a person that is doing uh, uh, problems or that is doing the evil yeah. in the world, the acceptance thing is to try to think how was their life when they were six, five years old. That's right. So think about every children that are living a situation that um, that for us today is like, oh, this child is suffering. Compassion. But maybe in 20 years, that child will be a yeah. terrible person uh -huh. because of what happened yeah. when he's five. Yeah. So all the people that we think, oh, they are terrible people, they actually might have had a very terrible childhood. Oftentimes they did. And when, I, when working as a therapist, mm -hmm. the more I would hear somebody's story, the more I understood mm -hmm. how they became the way that they are. Yeah. Again, I can have acceptance, compassion, but it doesn't mean I would condone a behavior. Mm -hmm. And so I think people think I need to be in resistance and put somebody to jail or yeah. take action. But it's like you can actually find harmony and peace inside of you. There's a place for the anger. Yeah. There is a place for our human experience totally. to process that and then come into balance mm -hmm. if we choose to so that we anything we're giving out we're actually experiencing mm -hmm. and then we can still take action and yeah. kind of i think shift the paradigms to shift that pattern yeah. you know and i don't know I've, I've done an akashic record reading with somebody and and the more i do that work i'm like i don't know maybe i was that i have that same pattern in this life that i've played out unconsciously or in another life and yeah. who am i to judge but i do <coughs> i do know that my life is to to, to use everything for my growth and to yeah. come into peace. But I don't know what their spiritual curriculum is. And it's not my place to know. Exactly. But if I'm in judgment, I'm actually repeating the very thing that I'm judging them and doing mm -hmm. in that moment. Yeah. Projection work, essentially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You are nourishing that option in the universe. Yeah. Uh, it's like, for example, um, there are many things like happening today with, um, I don't know, like the war in the Middle East, yeah. for example. And um, today, because everyone is talking about it, they expect for me to say something about it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because I'm not going to fulfill the need of someone yeah. of me entering a world that is not mine. Mm. My work is consciousness. Yeah. It's not about deciding who is wrong right or who is and right. Mm -hmm. um, so... Mm -hmm. and and this is this is in 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 many topics in many in many things that are happening in, in life people tend to go to the opposites yeah trying to think or believe that um whatever is wrong for them is wrong for everyone mm -hmm. and uh, and there's a bigger picture happening yeah mm -hmm. yeah but i really hear you staying true to your own uh autonomy and to what feels right for you mm -hmm. and it doesn't mean because you're ending the war inside of yourself yeah. i think that's again one of the most important things and some of us will feel called to yeah. you know support, support war in the middle east support nature and you know like environmental <coughs> other people will do work with you know i used to work as a psychotherapist so we all have different callings and we yeah. can follow that but again all comes back to starting within ourselves and clearing that division exactly. within us. Yeah, and, and it, as you said, there is a conflict for each person. So we cannot all be in all the conflicts. Yeah. So we cannot, because otherwise we wouldn't have a complete vision. Mm -hmm. So uh, you need people fighting for something. You need people talking about something. You mm -hmm. need people meditating about something. So we all complete the whole picture. Yeah. And uh, uh, today, um, well, today, no all human history uh, we have been constantly acting as hurts mm -hmm. running in the middle of 
the forest trying to survive together. And if one thought differently, it was left behind. Mm -hmm. And so that's why most of the people talk about things or support things that they don't understand. Because they're afraid that if they speak out or have a different experience, then they will not be accepted by your tribe and then you are mm -hmm. left out and you die. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it yeah. runs deep in our it's nervous very, system. It's very ancient. Yes. Yeah. Seven years of the epigenetics, all of that. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's very ancient. It it's is. like you being in a cave. It's not about school. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. very ancient. It's yeah. in your cells and your guts. Uh, something that you cannot escape is the subconscious. Yeah. Uh, you can you can not even dominate it. You can uh, learn about it and try to handle it uh, by using the unconscious to become conscious. Yes. Um, and some people think that being conscious means to be a good person. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and or yeah, these kind of things. Yeah. Um, um, like uh, uh, today with social media and everything, there is a lot of conspiracy theories, mm -hmm. for example. I don't usually speak about them uh, because uh, I don't want to nourish yes. that idea. I and I said, oh, so you are denying that happens. No, mm -hmm. I'm not denying them. Yeah. It's just that I don't want to feed your energy to it, mm. <laughs> to give power to it. Ooh. This kind of leads me to where I want to shift the conversation a little bit to manifestation. Yeah. And manifesting our full potential. Mm. What is your perspective? How do you support people in being conscious creators? How do you how do you hold manifestation? Well, uh, I the, the word the the word manifestation mm -hmm. also uh, money and fest ah. uh, means uh, to do a party with your hands. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's funny. I, I love that <laughs> to make a party with your hands, like manifesta. Uh -huh. So. Um, also in Latin. So what it means? It means that from your heart, you project mm. and you create what is here. Mm, I love that. So, so manifestation requires coherence mm -hmm. of feeling. Mm -hmm. So you cannot manifest a reality if you don't fully believe within or sense and feel that that is actually true. Mm. Um, so the coherence is the foundation again. Yeah. Again, mm -hmm. because the coherence is like the three notes to make a chord. Yeah. And, and part of the work that I do is help people question their limitations or beliefs or somatically integrate the fear in their body so that they can come from a clean slate and accelerate yeah. manifestation. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, there are different types of manifestation. Mm -hmm. um, like I, I've, I've heard once that here in the States, it was very powerful, a, a book or a movie. That the Secret. The Secret, yeah. yeah. The Secret. And a lot of people thought that just by thinking about it, they could have a car. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I know. That's not, not, it's not how it works. Thing. <laughs> it's yeah. not exactly how it works. It was a good stat. It made a lot <laughs> yeah. of people start getting curious. It, yeah. yeah, it created a lot of, uh, of awareness about, oh, yeah. you, can, you are the creator of your own reality. Mm. But there are many other laws of the universe. That that's right. That's right. Can, yeah. That's right. And, um, and again, we come back to the design that you are. Like, um, let's say if you're a circle and you're trying to create a square, mm -hmm. it's going to be complicated yeah. to fit it in your reality. So when you understand who you are, mm. you understand the tools that you have to manifest. Mm. And sometimes we follow the ways of others to manifest. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we read a book and you say, oh, this person teach me exactly how to manifest. And I do that, like I do my altar, I do this and I put that. <laughs> but maybe it's not working for you because you're a circle and I'm a square. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and um, so you have to find your own way of, of creating the geometrical structure for that geometry that is around you mm. to fit in. Mm -hmm. um, and that requires to create your own mm -hmm. so that's the manifestation coming mm -hmm. it's like you have to take action and to create by your own self yes the shape of that reality uh because if you follow the mold of, of others you might not you're out of alignment yeah um because some people has a huge power of manifestation and some others needs to work harder mm -hmm. like uh, let's say something very simple um if you are a Pisces, you will manifest through dreaming. Mm. 
going outside and getting lost in the city and not knowing where you are and suddenly you find someone that helps you mm. and you manifested something beautiful mm. but that's the Pisces way of doing it mm. if you're a Capricorn you have to work at least five years to accomplish something yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like your design requires time uh. frustration <laughs> test uh. uh to value yourself so so um, if you are trying to manifest like a Pisces being a Capricorn, you will suffer mm -hmm. because instead of just enjoying the walk, mm -hmm. you will be thinking it's going to be in the next corner. Mm -hmm. uh, how should I work? Mm -hmm. Maybe I should do this uh, like first with the right foot or, you know, that <laughs> too <laughs> or <a> Capricorn mental. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> too, too mental. So um, so we have different designs mm -hmm. in how to manifest. And by knowing ourselves, we can actually yeah. uh, know better which one is our way. Yeah. Um, and I would also say doing the work to clear the subconscious misunderstandings or limitations also yeah. helps put us in alignment. Totally. But yeah. I've been on this, I'm becoming a joyologist this mm -hmm. summer where I'm studying joy and what brings me aliveness. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about the importance of joy in manifestation. Yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. Uh, totally. Because... Um, when you, for example, it's a chemical reaction. Mm. When you uh, the frequency the are happy, uh -huh. um, or, or when you do things that makes you laugh, um, no matter what it is, you are sending a signal to your brain to generate specific hormones that will push your cells to react in one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And just by laughing or smiling. Mm -hmm. So it creates a complete different mindset because your neuron starts to perceive the reality in a different way it starts to to receive codes from the outside saying oh wait a moment something terrible is happening but this person is laughing somehow mm. so the brain starts to process what is happening as an opportunity instead of a of a limitation mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and educating your brain to laugh and to enjoy yeah the process instead of suffering it and saying why it's never why working me? for me why me yeah. and these kind of things yeah. uh it's like it's like um going to the gym for the brain <laughs> uh -huh. that's right inner exercise you're training your consciousness to then yeah. and also with your laughing or your smiling it tells your nervous system that you're safe yeah. right and that help and anytime we have a big emotional experience whether positive or negative quote unquote your subconscious will take a screenshot of like, let yeah. me avoid that or let me create more of that. So the more you're consciously choosing that, focusing on gratitude or joy, yeah. you experience that. You you also tell yourself and your yeah. cells that what mm -hmm. you want is safe. Yeah, totally. I, I had this experience of um, in 2012, I was traveling around the world and I was so afraid and, and insecure of myself, mm -hmm. of what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I wasn't... I was accomplishing my mission, but I wasn't fully believing in what I was the, what I was doing. Mm -hmm. So I was afraid of sharing it. Yeah. And so every time that someone wanted to make an interview to me, I would say, "No, I'm I'm afraid of the camera." Like, uh, yeah. like no, 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 I don't. Uh, so I was worried all the time mm -hmm. about uh, this is gonna kill me. Like, mm -hmm. um, people will know that I don't trust myself. Like, like these kind of things. Like, I was very worried about being filmed or interviewed about anything. Yeah. And um, and that same year, uh, I was kidnapped oh. in Paraguay in the middle of the forest by natives with arrows and yes. guns and everything. And uh, and I and there was one pointing in my head with this gun. And one of my guides from the fifth dimension appeared in my side and leaned towards me softly and said, "After this, the camera is nothing." Yeah. <laughs> And I started to laugh <laughs> <No>. <laughs> because he made a joke in that terrible oh. situation, but totally changed my perception of what was happening. It was yeah. like, oh, now I'm not, I'm not going to be afraid of anything. Wow. Instead of right. saying, I'm going to die. How did I attract this? Why is this happening to me? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was like, wait a moment. Like now I can talk to a camera. Wow. It was, it was uh -huh. different. The, uh -huh. the perception was like, I'm not afraid of a camera now wow. instead of, I'm going to die. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah. That's incredible. The, so, and we all have that choice how we hold it. Mm -hmm. We we all have guides and guidance. Yeah. Um, 
actually, I would love for you to speak to that. Like for people that are struggling or in a hard situation, can you talk to us about the unseen guidance or something that people, the support that they can lean into if they're wanting to feel that in their life? Yeah. Well, when we talk about interdimensionality, Mm -hmm. uh, we have to remember that we are all one thing. And that one thing starts to split to three, four, five, and so on, and doubles itself for billions and billions. So only one being become billions of beings, trillions and quadrillions or whatever, Mm. eternity of beings that are only one. But all of them observe this, the reality from different points of view. Yeah. So sometimes what we call a guide mm-hmm. or a master is just ourselves observing ourselves from a different dimension. Mm-hmm. So it's not separate beings mm-hmm. that are guiding us. It's just ourselves observing us from a different point of view. But they cannot speak directly because they don't have the experience of what is this. Mm. So the only way I can interact with them is if I open myself to recognize that I am them. Beautiful. Not that there's other people that I have to hear yeah. uh, or see. Yeah. It's actually myself. And when and I... And that's with everything and everyone, not exactly. just the guides. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. With everything. Yeah. So... Um, so in that in those terms everything can speak to you Mm -hmm. suddenly a plant can be a master a stone can tell you things a wall can tell you things Mm -hmm. like i used to speak with everything in my home Mm -hmm. like the door the glasses Mm -hmm. uh, because a glass is made of sand and the sand was in a beach Mm -hmm. and uh, and it has the sea and the transformation of the river and the mountain. And so there are so many frequencies and, and, and information everywhere mm. that when you realize that you are also that and that your cells, in order to be a cell, needed silica to shape the cell. Mm. And the silica is also in the sand that created the glass. So suddenly you are silica. Yeah. So you can speak with silica yeah. and you can speak with the mountain just by being the mountain Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. it's not about i hear voices or or there's someone talking to me it's about me allowing myself to become so the less i identify with the more i am exactly and so the less the like reference point is a single self body Mm. mind opening awareness to the larger truth Mm. of what we are then we wake up to being all of it Mm -hmm. yeah there, there's so much. I mean, I could talk to you forever. <laughs> so this is one of the most fascinating, enlightening, heartfelt conversations I think I've ever had. There's ways that you can weave in spiritual dimensions and perspectives, which I hang out less in. I'm really most interested in enlightenment and waking up to the truth of who and what mm-hmm. I am. And there's a way that you can articulate it that's fresh and innovative and clear. And so I just want to mm-hmm. thank you for that. Thank you. And I, I want to ask you one last question. Yeah. Is there, is there something that we are not exploring or not a question that we're not asking that we should be that would really change everything for us? Hmm. Um, maybe, yeah. Well, of course, there are many things, but um, it's related to the mistake. Hmm. There is... Um, something that has been mistaken in the universe and that we don't usually think about and and it's holding everything Mm. and it's just a tiny little mistake that we give for granted and it's maybe not philosophical it's something hidden that uh, it's very difficult to rasp or even question Um, but I would say um, we have this thing of oh things are mistaken and then in spirituality we say there are no mistakes Mm -hmm. Um, (coughs) and uh, and one of the reasons why I say this is because one of the 
of the things that I could connect with was how can a mistake know that it's a mistake if its very nature is to be a mistake. Mm. And from that, there are many things to dive in that opens a whole other aspect which is outside of this universe mm. and it's a very complicated thing mm -hmm. because it's outside the laws of this mm -hmm. universe mm -hmm. so i think that's a very thing that we don't usually um that we are not asking uh somehow that there seems to be a mistake that is so perfect <laughs> that it doesn't look like that it looks perfect mm. Yeah. And, and, are, and are, can you be more like explicit about it? Can you share like if it were if I were a fifth grader? Uh, well, it's, it's like you created um, the most perfect Lego castle. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wow, it's a perfect Lego castle uh, that it says that has a um, a hundred. Um, like a billion pieces and you have one in your hand but it's perfect mm. so what is this why if i put everything where it was supposed to be mm -hmm. what am i doing with this and with one that is missing mm -hmm. there's one missing in the whole thing and i don't know what the castle can become if i put it but i don't know where it goes mm -hmm. so so I get the analogy, but I don't get the practicality. That's why we never talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> so is, is, is the mistake in our thinking or an identity? No, no, it's, it's not even from this world. <laughs> so, so I, that's why it's, it's like something that uh, it's a very philosophical thing mm -hmm. uh, that is the basis of all the existence. So it's not something that is practical in our daily life. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's something that is coming more often. Mm -hmm. And uh, <coughs> and uh, I am trying to figure out uh, w what it means somehow. Like okay. I think a lot of people is is into that now, mm -hmm. doing kind of that question. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, but. Um, yeah, it's, it sounds like it, you're currently working on discovering and articulating what this is yeah. to be able to share with people. Is that right? Yeah, mm -hmm. because there are many, many stories that I have been sharing about it, but I didn't go deeper into them because I don't understand them. OK. Yeah. OK, because maybe it's outside the realm of mind. Maybe people. or not. <laughs> okay. Well, to be, it sounds like a very, it sounds mysterious. And yeah. It sounds it's, another, like, it's another episode. <laughs> another episode to be for continued. The, for the cause of us. Maybe. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's definitely do it. Yeah, yeah. When you have more that you articulate around it and you dive deeper into it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I, but I thank you for just the courage it has taken to speak your truth and to, to share with people your experience, to remind hmm. us of connecting back with our own truth and to live in harmony and in resonance with our words, yeah. thoughts, and actions. I'm really taking that away. And thank you for your presence you. in this world and on this podcast. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you for doing your purpose. <laughs> yeah, what a gift. Thank you so much for doing this work that changes the world, starting with yourself. It truly does make a difference. And if you're finding value in this podcast, a cost-free way to support us is by leaving an up to five-star review. It does mean the world to us. And as a thank you gift, we're going to send you one of the most powerful tools that you will ever discover. You're going to get behind the scenes access, showing you how to live into your full potential without letting fear hold you back from stepping into your dreams. Just head over to Apple Podcast or Spotify and leave a review now. You can take a screenshot before hitting submit and then go to alissanobriga.com forward slash podcast to upload it. And make sure to have your automatic downloads turned on wherever you listen so you don't miss any of the upcoming episodes. I have so much magic I can't wait to share with you. And you can find all this information in the show notes below. But lastly, if you're on Instagram, I love connecting and hearing from you. So come on over and say hello. I'm at alissanobriga. Thank you again for being here. I cannot wait to share more with you.